I wanted the six spear, so I got the six spear LT in 5.56. But this just didn't do enough for me, man. I wanted the real deal, holy feel. The actual six spear, the XM7 as it's called now, that shoots the 227 Fury. However, I didn't have that 227 Fury type of money. Coming in, I've read from 4,000 to even 7,000 on the aftermarket. It was a gun that I was just not gonna be able to get. However, with that being said, it didn't stop me. It didn't stop me because I'm loving this, man. So what I did instead is built the six spear at home. Guys, we have it in full effect, my very own SIG Spear at home. This is called the uh, TD7, uh, I guess. We'll call it something like that. I really wanted to build something. I really wanted to build my own gun from scratch and just enjoy it, man. Since jumping into the gun community and seeing how it's very similar to computers in a way. You know, building a computer from scratch is fun and you can really get the bang for your buck when it comes to those type of things as well as when it comes to guns. You can buy a gun from a brand out there, from a company out there pre-built and spend, you know, two, three thousand dollars, but make that same gun, you know, from parts and pieces for probably half the price. And I wanted something in 308 for quite some time that was close to that of what the Sig Spear was. Now the Sig Spear does shoot, and this we're talking about the MCX XM7 version, the civilian version that's actually out. I've seen it go for around you know, 4,000 and up. They have made models in 308 as well as in the 227 Fury. And I wanted to get something in that big caliber like that. And of course, short barreled 308s and our AR-10s as is what this is, is not always the best as far as people have said on paper, but Hey man, it's all about having fun at the end of the day. And you know, this isn't like something that, I mean, you could take this to war, you know, but this isn't like the first gun I'm gonna grab. Cause first of all, if this 308 ammo and everything in general and supply of it, for me personally, this is not something that I just have, you know, as much of as a nine millimeter, uh, 7.62, 5.56, 300 blackout. But I definitely wanted to build something that I can have fun with, take to the range and have even more fun with, you feel me? So. That's what we have here today. I wanna to break down the parts and pieces and I want you guys to stay tuned because we're gonna actually do a full on in-depth review as well as some fun stuff later on this week with this gun right here. So from tip to butt, salute to grand thumb on that, we're gonna break down everything that we got here. First things first, right off the rip, we have the War Comp. Now we have a 762 War Comp. This is the, basically the 308 version and it's pinned and welded. And why is that? Because the barrel that is on this gun is a 13.5 inch barrel, of course, in the 308. Um, I bought this barrel from someone online for a really good price. He also threw in, you might be able to see it, maybe you don't. Let me see if I can get the focus. Probably not because it's blurry. Behind there, a little bit you can see it. I have an adjustable gas block also on there from Aero Precision. Uh, Aero Precision. He threw in the barrel along with that. The barrel, I believe, is a CMMG barrel with the adjustable gas block, you know, as to you know, help gas this thing up because it can get very crazy. And with the pin and weld, it brought me up to 16 with a proper spacer. We have some little bit of spacers you can see. It isn't just straight up, just flush. There is spacers that was needed. Not that many though, but enough to get that fully out to the 16 legal limit. So we got that on there pin and welded so it's legally 16 inch barrel now and on the handguard we hear you know we have a Wilson combat salutes to Wilson combat because Wilson combat actually sells these handguards black but you can pay a $40 extra fee to actually get them to Cerakote it and I had them Cerakote it in the burnt bronze color because I just wanted something very close to what I had with of course, my Sig Spear LT, and I wanted to I wanted to make this look like the Sig, you know, XM7. So it is what it is. As far as this little front grip that we added on here, I said it wrong last time. Ariska, I want to say it's Ariska, Ariska front grip. I own about three or four of these already because I love them. They're like 30 bucks, and it's a good like I want to say aluminum, some sort of metal used, and it's very sturdy. It's very nice. Gives a good hand stop and front grip if needed, but I use it more so like a hand stop almost, and. I love it, I love it, A1 steak sauce. As far as the mount, I mean, as the LPVO, my bad, LPVO um, using a Sig Tango MSR. Now this ain't the ST, the ST is the real deal, holy feel, that's the one that they actually put on the actual 
you know, XM7, but I just put on the MSR. I had a Strike Eagle on there, but I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna go full out, you know, six spear cloney, I won't even call it a clone, my bad, don't kill me, but inspired build, let's go ahead and throw the Tangle on there, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a decent one, it's about two, three hundred dollars, you can find it on sale, it's not the greatest, but like I stated before, this is not like life or death rifle. This is a fun rifle, but I think it's definitely capable, you know, as built, as is. We have also the receiver set, which is Aero Precision, and this is their M5, you know, receiver set that I picked up. Got it on like AR-15, like on a huge discount. I wanna say like I paid like 200 for the top and bottom receiver set. Amazing price I was able to get it on. Of course I had to throw in the Lancer mag. This is the Lancer mag. This is a 20 round mag, YouTube. 20 round, 20 round magazine. And it is, you know, empty and clear. And I love it. It fits the look. This is the look that the actual, you know, XM7 actually has. They, Picture this with this, you know, you know, it is what it is. We have, um, once again, as I stated, the Aero Precision receiver set, the B5 Systems grip. I love this grip. I had this on about a couple, like three other guns. I just love it. I love the Coyote look to it. A1 steak sauce on that. B5 Enhance. I want to say this is the Enhance. This might be actually, I can't remember if this is, it looks kind of slim. Let me just look, bro. I, I, maybe it's not the Enhanced. I have an Enhanced. Let me just confirm that. <laughs> yeah, it is the Enhanced, because I don't think if it's not Enhanced, I don't think it has the storage capacities on the side. I think it's just like a little bit more slimmer, but we have the Enhanced uh, Coyote B5 System SOP Mod, you know, stock right there. We have, uh, this is a Aero Precision Breach 308. Check it out, the bolt release and the actual bolt itself is in aero precision. All the lower sets, I think I got these like from CMMG, primary arms and all that. Pretty, uh, yeah, really nice and clean. I did have some issues with this gun at first, but it was my fault. Um, this is a carbine buffer tube. I was told from various people, you know, you could put in a AR-15 buffer, but you need a 308 spring. So I did that. I had an AR-15 AR buffer tube laying around already. I bought the 308 spring, I put the buffer in there, and it was shooting. However, it would shoot the first round, and the second round would get caught up. And it's happening over and over and over and over, and I was like, what is going on, you know? I started looking, I was thinking it was the mag, because actually what I was doing, I was actually putting oil on the bullets, like getting the bullets wet, like just trying to see if, because it was the, 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 the metal lips on this, right? The metal lips on this, when the bullet was going, it was it was definitely causing some friction that was not allowing the bullet to slide out into the actual chamber. So I was thinking that was some friction that needed to loosen up and all that, right? Well, it wasn't none of that. Come to find out it was me and a mistake I made. It needed a 308 buffer. Pretty obvious. Kind of stupid of me to think, but I found out and it's all about learning. It was a 308, so I needed a 308 buffer. Some people told me the AR-15 would work. I think it would work, but not on a carbine buffer too. I think it would have worked on a actual 308 buffer, a rifle uh, buffer, then a buffer tube, rifle buffer tube, and then a carbine buffer tube. I think the buffer tube was just too short and that's why it caused the issue. But basically the 308 buffer is slightly smaller than the AR-15 buffer and it weighs more. So basically what was happening when you was going back, the buffer in the BCG, my bad, was not going all the way back far enough to catch the next round. It was going like, literally, you see how it is right here? You can see it's still like poking out. It was like that. It was, hold on, yeah. Don't focus on me, focus on the gun, bruh. See how it is like there? It was going like right, maybe even like right there. And it was barely, it wasn't snag enough on the gun. But now that I have it back, it goes all the way back. You feel me? And that's what we need to happen in order for, you know, when it shoot, when it was shooting, it was going back, but not far enough. And then when it was going forward to catch the next round, it wasn't doing it, it was scraping it. But now I did that, took it to the range and shot without, any hiccups whatsoever. I love this gun, man. It's definitely a fun gun. You guys might think 308 out of a 13.5 is extremely obnoxious and loud and, and horrible. No, it's not, okay? This gun shoots quieter, as far as it sound, than my M1A, okay? So, hey, if the M1A is even, uh, it shoots, this sounds quite more, more less crazy than the M1A that I have. The Springfield M1A that I got. I don't know if it's the war comp, if it helps compensate the sounds. I mean, you know, I know it doesn't necessarily reduce the sounds, but redirects it or something. It's not as bad as people think. And handling it, it's not as bad as people think. It definitely has a kick, but it's not as bad as people think. And once, of course, 
surefire, you know, that surefire suppressor comes in when I can get it, probably within a year or something like that, the way this thing is. Uh, it will be not even a problem whatsoever, and it would make even more sense with that extension and all the above. So it's definitely already in my thought process. This thing, this build, I love it. I think it's sexy, and uh, I'm happy for it. So stay tuned, and uh, yeah, man. Y'all will see a video on this more than likely by the end of this week of us having a little bit more fun with this. But I wanted to go ahead and break down, tip the butt, my brand new six spear at home. So stay tuned. I love y'all. Let me know y'all guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. And uh, did I say everything? I think I said everything pretty much, yeah. I'm out. Peace.